Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, yet another trip to Lowe's and yet another battery haul. So, I uh, I always take a gander in their, their battery return because, you know, 18650s. I eventually want to build my own like power wall sort of thing. And sure enough, in the recycling bin were this Cobalt 80 volt max, Dewalt uh, 40 volt, still seems good. A, uh, what is this, a Black & Decker, maybe? Yeah, Black & Decker lithium 20 volt, tiny little guy. Cobalt 18 volt lithium ion, and that's still reading full charge. I don't have any Cobalt tools. Now most of these I'm just going to tear down because I, the only <laughs> tool I actually have that a battery will work with is a Cobalt. cobalt. 80 volt, so you can see my other battery here, then a Husqvarna battery, so <laughs> quite a few batteries from the uh, the return bin, and pretty much all of them check good, except for the one I could use, of course, so get rid of these, so you can see this one doesn't even register when you press the battery uh, indicator. And taking a look at voltage here, put this on the uh, 60 volt, shove into the terminals there. So it looks like we're seeing 47 volts. So that seems pretty good. I'm wondering if this was just used, you know, on a nice hot summer day, forgot to charge it, battery cools down, cell voltage goes below the cutoff point and maybe the electronics aren't letting it uh, charge up anymore. Only problem is I don't know if I have a power supply that I could even bring this back because that's a pretty high voltage. Just to show you the issue here, see, gives the blinking red light of death now I did read up some reviews on these batteries and it seems like a lot of them get returned. And I'm hoping that's just because of uh, owner incompetence where you know people are familiar with the chemistry of lithium ion batteries and they leave them sit empty over the course of you know the entire winter, the battery gets cold, blah, blah, blah. Um, here's one that I used last season. I probably should have left it at half capacity but accidentally left it on the charger a little too long. You can see a good battery, fires right up, and it sounds like a small jet engine. So this one's not charging, and we obviously still have 47 volts in it. So what I want to see is if we can recover it with the power supply. So maybe bring her up to 60 volts and seeing if that does anything for us. All right. So we'll bring it right up to where the battery is, just a hair over, and we'll see what our current limit's at, quarter amp. So that should be a nice small current. Got our plusative hooked up, we're obviously at a current limit. Now these are, I believe, uh, INR 18650 cells, so they are the higher current variety, obviously being used in a power tool. But uh, at the same time, if one of them is faulty, I don't want it catching the rest of the cell on fire. Yeah, it looks like it's starting to maybe take some capacity. That's good. It's taking a little longer to climb. So this might be recoverable. It might have just been below the threshold that the charger would allow it to uh, pop back up. Just out of curiosity, I do want to take a look at the good cell. Let's see what voltage that is at just to get an idea of how low the cells may have gone. All right, so the, the good battery is at 80.3 volts. Lowe's, AKA lower your damn standards. And Cobalt is of course Lowe's house brand, just in case you weren't familiar. All right, so while we're waiting for the sucker to charge up, just wanted to uh, talk what I think is going on inside this. So two amp hour, 80 volt max, I'm guessing they probably have 20 18650 cells just stacked in series. So 
that would bring you to, assuming 4.2 volts, that would bring you to 84 volts fully charged, uh, each cell being at 4.2 volts. So 80 volt, they might actually only have 19 cells, but I would assume 20 just for a round number. So obviously each cell is a 2 amp hour cell, so reasonably low capacity. You, you can get, you know, 25, 26, 100 milliamp hour INR batteries, no problem. Not, not anything too special going on in here. I'm more curious about maybe whether they have some good balancing circuitry going on in here or, or what exactly might have caused the issue. All right, 57 and a half volts and still no sign of life on the battery, but it's continuing to absorb, so that's, that's good. And there's no noticeable heat coming from it. No, uh, no funny smells. All, all decent signs. This might end up being a pretty good freebie. While we're waiting for this sucker to charge up, check this out. My father-in-law just gave me this beautiful old wrench. Believe it was from turn of the century, so around 19, right around 1900. Uh, I think there might be a date on here. It might be in 1891. But god damn, what a beautiful old wrench. And the incredible thing is, it's still smooth. I mean, it could probably use a little grease, but <laughs> I imagine this thing hasn't been greased since the 1900s. Could be the early 1900s, could be the late, who knows. All right, well, battery is up as high as my power supply goes. Taps out at 63.2 volts, unfortunately. So can't be bringing this any higher. Still no sign of life on the battery indicator here but maybe it'll be able to take a charge now. I mean, we did climb it up near, ooh, got a little zap there. We did climb it up nearly 15 volts or so. Let's see. Holy shit. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. We rescued it. She's working. She's charging. That's awesome. I have a spare for my weed whacker now. Man, having this power supply is worth its weight in freaking gold, I'm telling you. If you do any sort of electronics screwing around, get yourself a power supply. What a great tool. So, let's uh, crack this sucker open, some security bits. I'm going to glove up because... This is 80 volts. It's plenty enough to, uh, what is this, a T10 it looks like? Woo! First try. Um, throw some gloves on because, what is it, over 30 volts can jump skin. Now this battery is also the same exact one used by Greenworks. Um, and there's Snapper, maybe? I know I saw it on another brand, but I know Greenworks uses, if not identical, it's nearly identical. Glove up. So let's take a look at her now. Assuming I, ooh. Wow, look at that. That's beautiful. That's a really, really neat design for a battery. I mean, there's a lot of a uh, lot of wasted space, but that's all for ventilation. So when you're charging, you can get good air air flow through, you know, the middle and going out the sides. You can see they're venting. Wow. Um pretty surprised. You can see some yard dust got in here. There's like some sawdust or something. So their uh, their ceiling isn't quite perfect. But really nice. Pretty rigid. I don't think it's class fiber, but ah, we'll leave that to AVE. He can diagnose glass fiber with his tongue. So, got a couple MOSFETs, probably just circuit protection, I'd imagine. Some sort of uh, locked in potentiometer there, I would guess. And then on the front side, 
don't know how the hell I'd get that out of there. Oh, got her. Oh, -ho. so got the brain box here, LEDs, which uh, when you press that button, they should indicate this is what you're looking at just to help orient you. So really nicely designed battery pack. Got the balancing leads coming out. So, I mean, it's all, it's all really, look at that. I guess that's a big, big ass fuse there. Yep, F1, big ass fuse. Look at that sucker. I wonder what the current rating on that is. Got to be high. But all the cells look to be in really good shape. I don't see any that are bulged, leaking, anything of the sort. So I think, I think she's okay to charge up. Let's see if it'll do this. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. Look at all that balancing circuitry. There, there is a lot going on. So they have this thing balanced in pairs. So every two cells has a balancing wire going over to the board and on the inside board here, we can just maybe make it out. There's a bunch of balancing chips. Make sure everything's in order. But, I mean, given all those protections, I think this battery is good to go. We, we revived the sucker. It'll now get to play in my weed whacker, as opposed to another whacker. But uh, <laughs> we'll return this sucker to service. Let it live out the rest of its life in my weed whacker. Alright. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Click that little dingleberry next to subscribe so you can get notified when I post. And if you like the channel enough that you want to support me, keep these videos rolling, throw a little money into the beer fund. Please consider donating on Patreon so I can keep these videos rolling. I appreciate all my patrons so much. Thank you to every single one of you guys and girls. Uh, I think there's a total of 2.3% of my viewers who are women. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great one. Oh, oh. She works. Ha ha ha! Beauty!